Hi there and welcome back. It's Professor Mark Leone with another round of art history and drawing. 15 minutes with today is Rembrandt. Dutch artist Rembrandt. Okay, Baroque artist. I forgot the dates. I'll put them in the title on the video so you can have those. But again, this is more about just the exercise of looking at and being exposed to drawing. So let's do that now. Let's go on there. So we've got this first uh, Rembrandt image here. And what you're looking at is a preparatory drawing. It's a study. It is uh, drawn probably exclusively out of his head. Uh, and it is a way to explore ideas in composition. So this very uh, direct contour, sketchy kind of line with some hatching and some dark tones in here is really, really kind of a graceful beginning an attempt uh, for Rembrandt, uh, excuse me, Rembrandt to figure out ideas and composition to engage in the design process rather than a finished drawing, even though I think these are lovely on their own. So this is the first drawing, preparatory drawing. So here we have the same thing, the same kind of idea, preparatory drawing. This is of the master in his studio with pupils and we have the, the uh, model, in this case a female partially uh, nude. Rembrandt um, taught uh, on his own. He taught from his uh, house. I got to go to his studio in his house when I last uh, year and a half ago when I was in Amsterdam in in the summer and it was a lovely lovely experience and so he would entertain uh, a few pupils at a time or a year or so it was very few and uh, teaching them uh, drawing and painting very traditional baroque you know kind of techniques and um, also in the same roughly manner that that um, that he worked on and here we have a preparatory chalk drawing highlighted in sepia tone which we see out here this kind of uh, brownish tone and then we have a darker line to kind of tighten it up and we get a very kind of staged view where we're all kind of uh, one kind of one point all across the composition and we're kind of forced in here composing wise anyway this is generally this figure here is is the Rembrandt figure, another preparatory drawing. Here we have a quick brush wash by Rembrandt, probably from life, a female model lounging or laying down. And here it's very tonal, so you get some line with the brush, and notice the variation, darker lines, lighter lines, and you get this turning of this cloth like a barrel, which is really lovely. Then you get some shadow tones, and that hold the drawing together and then you get the shadow tones here in the eyes almost like sunglasses the eye sockets can be like that also with the nose and then you get the a little detail in the hair and this beautiful brush washy brush stroke uh, here in terms of uh, a preparatory ink study these are little ex excerpts from uh, Rembrandt's sketchbook and they are just preparatory studies and they represent caricatures or individual uh, facial types, expressions, possibly done from life, but could, they could just as well be done from the imagination. You know, this particular, particular technique is mostly gesture sketching and linear with a little bit of tone, right, and some dark shadows in through here. So, Probably mostly pen and ink. I don't. I don't think these are etchings. They might be, but mostly a croquil type pen, a fountain type pen, and ink through here. Very expressive kinds of ideas that an artist will uh, do uh, quite a bit of sketching. A traditional artist will do quite a bit of sketching in order to uh, render ideas in his mind, his or her mind. Another preparatory drawing by Rembrandt. So I want to show you drawings that you may may not quite have, have seen. Something along the lines that are a little bit more obscure of how Rembrandt used drawing as a preparatory means and also as more of a means to an end when he did prints, uh, etchings, and we'll look, intaglio, and we'll look at those in a moment. Here we see a very scratchy uh, pen drawing of 
a winged figure that could be a angel of some type. We don't necessarily know. I don't know. An art historian could tell you more. And we see a very quick um, sketch. Look how gestural the figures are down below. So very abstract, very quick. And then we have the nice brush washes to give a little bit of indication of shadow. This particular technique was used all over the Renaissance, all over the Baroque, the uh, um, neoclassical uh, era, as well as Romanticism. And we can still really use it today quite a bit. But I want to show you again the quick effervescence, um, almost effortless sketching that... Um, Rembrandt would do in order to begin to think about an idea rather than a finished concept. You could do multiple uh, of these tens, tw twenty dozens. Here we have a lovely architectural study of probably a farm, cottage, or house. Uh, we have uh, two, two techniques going on. We have a hatched pen type drawing and then we have the washes that are going on either on top or before it. We don't necessarily know. It depends on if the ink is uh, water soluble or not and I just don't I, I don't know. So you have to be careful if you do these techniques because if your ink is water soluble and you put down a lot of these types of marks, the, the uh, hatching marks before you put your washes they could get washed away by the washes. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful. However, if the ink is non-water soluble, that means it doesn't dissolve in water, right? Then you can do your hatching detail first, right? And then you can uh, put your tone on, on uh, after that. A, a really lovely composition really forces us into this small corridor. And then we kind of expand our mind as we go, whatever's going outside behind that. But I love... I love these shapes he makes against the, the negative space. I think are really interesting and attractive in through here. Probably also done from exclusively from life. Here we have another composition, a Dutch traditional Dutch windmill. If you've never seen a windmill, they're fascinating. And uh, how water is pumped from one area uh, and, and redistributed to another area is a, is a uh, particular a uh, wonder of, of the world, I think, and a, a particular strong Dutch invention. Anyway, this is a chalk drawing, a sketch drawing, probably from life of uh, Rembrandt here. And you see little figures down here below in the in the composition. And really everything gets elevated, doesn't it? Up, up, up to the focal point, which is really the windmill. You know, all these shapes right against the, the background tone out in through here but then there's you know quite a bit of darks to hold us a little bit in down in the bottom of the foliage of the little cottage house and through here but everything really rises up and this fades out a little bit because there's more atmosphere as we get more distance so there's some distance between the windmill and the the home and then of course the ship over here too as well a little bit further out in the distance so you know we're closest here this is our closest uh, object with the people right and then the windmill too and then the ship is quite a bit farther away and he gives us a sense of atmosphere perspective all in a tiny little chalk sketch very really beautiful so the next image here is not a drawing rather it's an intaglio print made on what was probably some type of metal plate copper is used quite a bit or zinc today so I don't know for sure, but uh, it is a, a beautiful uh, rendering of uh, a, a family here uh, eating and breaking bread. We have the woman behind. You see the separation of the men from the women at that, at that particular time. But uh, what's going on technically here is just beautiful in terms of value of hatching mostly in uh, the these uh, lighter areas, a descriptive hatched contour quicker line you see some cross hatching here in that area and then the darker tones are built up with some hatched lines and also uh, crossed hatch lines almost like a hashtag as well and then this this drawing uh, done on the intaglio and the wax stop process was done in reverse right and then when you print it it comes out just the opposite so you have to design these in in the opposite you have to be careful if you have letter in words, etc., and so on, but a well crafted, beautiful uh, print from Rembrandt. 
So the next image is a famous intaglio print by Rembrandt here, 16, 1638, it looks like. And a uh, classic story of Adam and Eve in taking the apple from the serpent, and uh, Eve is about to to bite into that apple, and it gets admonished a little bit from Adam here. What we see is beautiful control all around of drawing technique, hatching and cross-hatching. Hatching is a one-way directional flow, like you see some here in this area, right? You see some down in this area and also across the form of the, the trees here. And cross-hatching, you get a double hatch. So he comes across the body of Eve here, and then he comes the opposite way and then keeps going to build up those darks, especially these mid-tone values in these darker areas. Let me go in a little bit deeper so you can see some of that. So it gets a little pixelated at this point in time. And then also controlling what you guys already know of simple contour lines, some of the outsides. What's interesting to know too is he gets a lot of atmospheric effect. We'll go back a little bit. And you see that the darks come forward and then the lighter contour lines back here in the background really help recede the, ob the objects back there and also the little elephant that we see back there as well. So if I turn off the layers, you can see that more fully now. The elephant lighter and then of course the focal point is here with Adam and Eve holding the apple. You get a lot of cross hatching. Just beautiful job of controlling landscape and also the figure. Self-portrait, we couldn't include a study of Rembrandt without a few or at least one self-portrait as a kind of a younger middle slightly middle-aged man for that time, would probably in his 30s here, maybe his early, early 40s. Uh, uh, and what we find, again, is everything that makes a great Rembrandt print and or drawing is a combination of deep, rich darks built up by hatching marks, primarily here. You can see how they break up. Also see how he uses symbols of dots, right, and dashes. And it's very gestural, very loose. The hair is, is a lot less detailed than you think. Lots of rhythmic flowy lines, curvy linear lines, right, happening through here. And then you get more cross-hatched through these darker lines. So try that sometime with an ink pen. Because remember, the nib is very, very small. And so you have to build up your darker values over time by hatching primarily and or cross hatching like I'm doing there. And you can see how that makes kind of a gridded little pattern. I prefer when I do ink drawings a little bit more just the hatching, but that's okay. I mean, everybody has a little bit different approach to that. But when we take the red off, we get this beautiful view of the finished piece here. And here we have our last piece. Um, don't know necessarily what the complete narrative, and it, narrative is, and it doesn't matter. What we have is a chalk drawing, mostly in the linear work, some of the brown work in through here, but mostly in the dark chalk, probably like a Conte or charcoal with these rich dark areas. And then it gets a little bit washy. He uses a wash, sepia kind of tone. We can see this brown wash in kind of a gray tone. You might have mixed a little bit of chalk, maybe broken up the pigment and mixed in the tone. We don't know. But we have probably a drawing mostly out of his head uh, and sketching and also, you know, sketched in a preparatory drawing. We also see some hatched lines, right? A little bit to give contouring. And we see a very kind of gestural approach in the hands. Anytime you see a master, um, Baroque master, Renaissance master, uh, neoclassical, etc., and you see more generic heads and facial features probably drawn out of their imagination. Again, a preparatory drawing, and we have a composition that kind of enters here, sees the two figures, and then it moves over this way, and then kind of around the composition, over, down, and then back through. Kind of a whirlwind as well. Hope you've enjoyed 15 minutes with Rembrandt.